I finished the plasma cutter. It goes right. Goes left. Goes this way. And that way. And it goes up and down. Unfortunately, this was a pandemic build and I didn't do a lot of filming. But I do have a montage of the building of the downdraft table. Because <laughs> side of the road they'll come change your tire for you you know even if you have fucked up hair like they're just generally kind as Although I don't have a lot of video of the construction I can walk you through all of the individual components and describe for you my design strategy the design started with these aluminum extrusions I found at the dump these are 45 by 45 and 45 by 90 millimeter Bosch Rex Roth extrusion. I don't know what they had been used for previously. Uh, I used to work for Bosch and we used this system for building assembly lines in a, uh, a factory that produced automotive components. Uh, but they're, uh, they're very nice extrusions. They're quite expensive. And when I found them at the dump, I knew I was going to be able to use them for something. And the particular design that I've used for this CNC plasma cutter with this cantilever bar is particularly well suited for these kind of components. The Y and Z axes hang in free air over the table. There's nothing on either side so you can put quite a large sheet, a sheet that's significantly larger than the table. The laptop mount is removable so if you had a very large sheet, you could take that off. I cut some brackets out of quarter inch steel to hold the 45 by 90 extrusion on the back of the cart. And then I milled these half inch aluminum plates. Half inch is probably overkill, but it is the, uh, the size that I had. And they hold a pair of beveled wheels that fit into this groove in the extrusion. And then there's a simple bearing, these are skate bearings, that ride on the flat portion in the front. 
and that's what supports the y-axis. The z-axis is the slide from a 19-inch Dell monitor, basically this this part moves up and down, this part is stationary, and what's in here are two drawer slides, and then I've simply added a stepper motor and uh, a screw to lift and lower this, and because my torch is a contact type torch, it's not a pilot arc torch. I built this carriage so that it can just ride on the surface of the metal. Ultimately, I would like to be able to use this with a pilot arc torch and a torch height controller, but for right now this seems to be working just fine. This basically just the, the, the weight of the torch rests it on uh, material to be cut. The carriage is similar to the x-axis. Uh, I've got two of these beveled wheels on the top and they ride in this groove in the extrusion. On the bottom I've got another one of these bevel wheels and that's on a short arm and then there's a strong spring that holds that to the underside. Let's see if I can move this. Yeah, you can see that move slightly. This rides quite smoothly, but if it gets knocked hard, nothing breaks because this whole thing is compliant. The drive motors for X and Y are a pair of NEMA 23 steppers with some tooth belts. And then for the Z is a NEMA 17 stepper, again attached to that uh, threaded rod. Pretty straightforward and about as simple as I could make it. Our controller box is in this uh, Lawn Master sprinkler controller box and it is attached to the back of the Y axis and it moves along with the Y axis. Inside here, We've got a Mach 3 USB controller card. And that's hooked up to three of these inexpensive stepper motor controllers. I believe these cards are about 40 bucks on, uh, on eBay. And these controllers, I think they were about, I wanna say they're $23 each. They were quite inexpensive. And then there's just uh, some terminal strips in there. And that is the extent of the electronics. For the torch head, I simply bought a replacement torch for my $250 plasma cutter and I removed the torch arm and JB welded that into a, a steel plate on my little carriage here. The carriage, these are milled aluminum blocks with eight millimeter linear uh, slides in there and some eight millimeter rods. Limit switch senses home there are also limit switches here. So this is the end of the belt for the y-axis. I 3D printed this on an FDM printer. This is just basically a tooth pulley with uh, bearings. And this is the uh, homing switch for the y-axis. And then the homing switch for the z-axis is on the control box. This whole thing is arranged so that I can disconnect the X belt and then this whole arm lifts off so that I can just put a piece of plywood down and use this as a workbench and then the arm sits on the back of the unit on those brackets. The downdraft table has got that plate there to sort of spread out the uh, the airflow so it comes from the whole uh, area and then I've uh, put some hardware cloth uh, down there so that any small pieces that fall down there don't go into the fan and get propelled out the uh, the end. I'm using I'm using a uh, sawdust extraction blower for my downdraft and basically I just roll this over to the garage door and point it outside and turn on the fan when I'm using it. I think that about covers it for the description of the unit. So let's have a look at it doing some cutting. First I'm going to run the program with the torch control disconnected and then we'll reconnect that and run the program again to do the actual cut.
Okay, that looks good. All right, let's enable the torch and the ventilation. So I need to work out some details with my tool chain. I use CanBam for developing tool paths. It's the same software that I use on the, on the big mill. And basically what I've been doing is just setting Z height to zero for everything and then pretending I'm using just a really skinny uh, end mill. And then I have to do some editing to those files to turn the torch on and off when I want to do a rapid move without cutting. So I would like to streamline that process a bit. Also, piercing is a little bit wonky, just turning the, the uh, torch on when it's sitting right on the workpiece. I would like to be able to touch off the torch to ignite it and then pull it a little bit above the workpiece. I think I can do that in software, but that's going to take some programming. I also have some interference issues, and I, and, uh, I believe this is not uncommon. I've seen several other people who have made similar tables on YouTube and I think that adding a, a wire for the pilot arc will help. What I've found is if I'm in contact with a workpiece, the machine runs just fine. But if I turn on the plasma cutter and I don't have a closed circuit here, the RFI interference crashes the Mach 3 USB CNC controller, so I need to sort out that, uh, that RFI or EMI interference issue. I think it's just going to be a matter of shielding and maybe some capacitors to, to, to filter out the high frequency RF. I've dealt with problems like that before and I'm confident I can get that figured out, but uh, for right now I need to be on my workpiece before I turn the torch on, otherwise the system crashes. But if I'm on my workpiece and I maintain contact, I can turn the torch on and off as I move around my cut without any problems. So for right now it's working, but some refinement is needed.